there i hope you can hear me uh uh welcome to my pj party <laughs> a very informal very um unofficial um girls night in as you know there are two of us usually here on live uh every night from 8 to 10 p.m today's saturday and uh i'm home <laughs> and my husband is not so i could do whatever i want and that's why i was po um posting this is who am i when you're not looking uh today we're gonna have uh hopefully a very nice guest uh, we're gonna talk all um curly stuff if you have any questions anything about makeup go out shopping um any questions from boys to girls that you uh, always wanted to ask anything that comes to mind. Uh, I would really appreciate if you could drop in the chat box if you can hear me, because I'm not really a tech savvy, so I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. Um, hello to everybody who came in already. Um, Frog Tech Tips, hi, Jada Diva, hi. Nancy Law says, loves my background, thank you. Train man, bye. Well, Hello and bye, come back. <laughs> uh, beer belly drivers, hello. Can you guys hear me? Restart travelers, thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you so much. Midnight Raven, hello and welcome. Now, um, can somebody write in that they can hear me well? Give me some confidence that you can hear me. <laughs> I hope you can. Oh, perfect. Thank you, somebody. <laughs> I wasn't sure. My husband usually uses an external microphone, and um, I'm not really sure what I'm using right now. <laughs> but as long as you could hear me, 
and the color looks great on you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, today's a PJ party, so I'm wearing my PJs. Uh, I'm the most comfortable in the onesie PJ. It's, uh, I guess, a little throwback to the childhood time. So it's all one piece, very Nordic looking. Um, also because probably I'm from North uh, Eastern, North Europe, uh, Latvia. So it kind of reminds me of the of home as well. Uh, uh, we're gonna have a guest uh, hopefully coming in soon. Uh, and we're gonna talk uh, about uh, what uh, she likes to wear or when she sleeps, uh, what uh, she does before she goes to bed and uh, what she does when nobody's looking. Um, let's see. If you have any questions for me or for our future guest, please drop it in the chat. Don't forget to tweet this out. The more, the merrier. Uh, the more people we have, the more fun it is. Uh, I know it's Saturday night and lots of people are out and about, but uh, I decided to stay in today. Sometimes it's good. <laughs> um, Nancy Locke says that uh, he he or she, he, I'm sorry, I can't see your thumbnail. Uh, it's in France, it's 1 a.m. Yes, yes, uh, time difference. Uh, I have dealt with time difference a lot. Um, I'm actually, as I mentioned before, I'm from Latvia originally, and right now I'm in, sitting in uh, Montreal in Canada. And the difference between time zones is eight hours. So, uh, when I first came here, it was a huge thing to get over the jet lag and then to actually get used to going to sleep and waking up in completely different hours. Um, and uh, yeah, and actually that's how I started to drink coffee. Uh, I never drank coffee before, um, just occasional uh, coffee out or cappuccino out with girls, with girlfriends. And then when I came here, I had to start to uh, do this because I otherwise was asleep all the time. I actually fell asleep once even at the supper time, so that's why I'm drinking coffee. So I know all about the time differences. Now I have the guest in and I'm gonna try and bring her in. Uh, now it would be good if I would know what am I doing. Okay. Hey, can you I hear me? Hi. Yay! Hey! <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hi! Still can't hear you. Uh, okay. I don't wonder if it is on your Hold side on or if it's on my can side. Can you hear me now? Okay, can you hear me now? Because I've got the... I see the... Um, um, let me see. Now bear with us. I'm gonna... Hold on. You can hear her. So oh, I can. I can. Okay, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, can okay. you? Uh, yeah, because I see my mic going up. And we can continue on. Thank you, Tristar. You are a big help. Okay. Now, say something. Hey, how are you? Yay. <laughs> are you can hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I am full on PGs and all <laughs> my big water bottle and everything. Can I ask you quickly? You have a beautiful name, but I don't want to mispronounce it. Could you pronounce it? I mean, we talk all the time, but uh, my name is Ksenia. Ksenia. That's what I thought it was, but with my name like Borgia, it gets you know all the time. So I'm always very careful to ask people. <laughs> Yeah, I know. My name gets mispronounced all the time, so I'm so used to, especially North America, but it's because it's not a common name, and I'm so used to different versions. I even had one lady calling me Sin once. So. Interesting. <laughs> I totally understand having a very ethnic name myself for, for North America, so yeah. that's why I always make sure to ask. Uh, yesterday, when I was uh, watching live on I'm Creator, I, uh, you were starting to talk about where your name is from, and I wanted to hear more. Can you tell me more about your name? Oh, yeah, sure. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, I have to apologize in advance if I'm a little stuffy and raspy from 
I was on that marathon. I didn't realize it for six and a half hours. I didn't realize it to the sixth hour. And then it was, you know, that I'm a creator and I went, all right, well, you're half an hour left. Then just finish yeah. one second. Oh, okay. yeah, I was watching it, uh, but uh, we were so uh, drained out from being there on there at the beginning because we were we started at three. Uh, yeah, launched. Then we had our own live stream yesterday, uh, and uh, we haven't been sleeping too well, so we were watching it uh, and participating <laughs> by watching it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I swear I I heard about you uh, trying to explain about uh, your <coughs> name. Yes, uh, my last name is um, Borgia, which is um, historically the Borgias, um, the most famous one that's known is Pope Alexander VI, Rodrigo Borgia. And uh, actually, he was originally from Spain, Borja, Spain, and um, went to Italy uh, through a series of events that's a long story, became the Pope, um, and his daughter Lucretia is very well known. Um, so much so that they created a Showtime drama series, which isn't exactly historically correct, but they, they take a lot of poetic license. Um, so it's a big family in Italian history. And um, interestingly enough, when I first went on Twitter uh, years ago, there is also a burlesque dancer that uh, a lot of people like to use the name Borsha. And I can understand it because um, there's whole channels and uh, Instagrams and whatnot dedicated to um, my ancestors. And the burlesque dancer on Twitter said she wanted the name Lady Borgia. And she said, well, you took my name. I guess that was her stage name. <laughs> and they said, well, that's great, but that's really my name. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> sorry. You know. You can use it, sure, but um, no, I'm not going to give up my name on Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of books. And um, like I said, there's uh, um, historical documentaries, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot, a lot of detail and whatnot. But it was really fun because in the fourth grade, we had to uh, do a report on our uh, family history and our ancestors. I was the only one who had books. <laughs> they brought in the books, the Borgias, Lucretia Borgia, had the stack. So that was a nice benefit to it. So Have pretty you cool. done the research on the family tree and uh, the like, actual ancestry behind? Oh, we have so many records on both sides because that comes from, I was my father's side. And um, yeah, my mother's side, um, is actually a notable family as well, but we won't go into that. Um, we have a book that goes back 500 years with all the, so wow. yeah, it's pretty well documented. In fact, I'm trying to get on the uh, my, my hands on the book because my grandmother just passed from my mother's side because um, oh. I would like to have her copy. She just passed away at almost 90 in January. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I find it a very exciting to to look into the history of, of the family trees. Uh, uh, I actually got into even my husband's family tree even more, I think, than he did. <laughs> and still uh, uh, because they were doing a family reunion, so I kind of got involved. And, and then I still keep researching for part of them. It's amazing. Like uh, his uh, part of the family goes as far as Vikings and uh, France and Norway and, and it's so amazing to get all these historical documents and you know uh, ship logs and all the things that support all you know uh, it's it's amazing I, I just get dug into it and I forget the world around me <laughs> I, I am totally with you on that I think it is so cool actually on my mother's side we do have history with um, Swedish history with Vikings and um, a lot of French on my mother's side so I love history and I even anything that I can get of older things that are part of the family and whatnot because it's just kind of neat to even like you said documents to have pieces yes. of everybody who came before you and then I think about it and go wow someday somebody might like, want to look at me that's just like crazy because <laughs> you think about it and you're like wow I wonder you know you can read so much but I the more you can find in detail about daily life and all that kind of stuff is just I really want to go, um, I haven't got the um, pleasure of going to the Borgia apartments at the Vatican. Yeah. 
and I really want to go there. And uh, there's several other places. There's actually, I just found it, uh, Borgia Castle that was uh, made available to the public in 1993 in Tuscany. And you can actually rent it uh, wow. for apparently a minimum of three nights. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it's, it's on uh, one of those, um, I think it's Home Away, or one of those sites that's like Airbnb. Right. And I, I went, wow, that's really cool. That would be really cool to stand somewhere that your family lived, you know, and where they went to bed every night. And that's just so, I, I'm with you. It's really fascinating. Where was your husband from? Where's his history from? Uh, well, oh, you uh, just told me. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, it's okay. Uh, his history from the mother's side is actually interesting. Uh, they Originally, they came to North America from Scotland that has deep Scottish roots. Uh, and uh, yeah, when he went to uh, Great Britain, to the Isles a couple of years ago, uh, he went partly investigating uh, the historical places associated it, uh, with it. And uh, actually, you, funny, you were talking about the castle. Uh, he was uh, standing in the middle of the ruins of the castle that once was owned by his uh, mother's uh, ancestry, you know, and has uh, still wow. it still has the same last name and like ev everything with it. And uh, it, it, we even have a picture here, and and it's amazing, you know, like that's what exactly he was saying. Uh, what you just said is just standing and <coughs> thinking about all the history behind it, and like you know, like imagining how did they live how did they look like how what were they doing like you know like everything it, it's so exciting yeah so and then uh, um, when i was researching his family tree uh, we traced it back to france and uh, and to even to viking ages as i was saying because actually uh if i don't know if you have watched uh, the history channel tv show vikings uh you know that's been one that's been on my list and i've had it um on my bookmarks forever but uh i think i got to watch part of it briefly i've been dying to watch that show oh you gotta watch it it's like if if you love history it's it's amazing it, and also the cinematic cinematography part of it it's, it's amazing especially the first couple seasons uh i just loved it <laughs> uh so yeah so uh, there is a character rollo uh which is like a brother from the from the main uh, character and that actually uh, is the direct uh, relative, like ancestor of my husband's mo uh, mother's side. And cool. He, yeah, and, and and he as a Viking, they went to France, which is also depicted in the the History Channel uh, TV show. Um, that part is close to tr to truth, you know, because it's mixed of truth and, and and the film. But yeah, historically, they went to France and and uh, decided to conquer Paris. And the whole story around it, he married the princess and uh, uh, they gave him uh, a castle, which was uh, named by a monk. And that's how he got his last name, because Vikings didn't have last names. Right. And that's where the last name stems from for my husband's uh, mother's side. Yeah, many people didn't have last names. It was just where they were from. So and so of. Yeah, you know. exactly. Exactly. So we, we even got to know like how how did the last name came and, and where exactly the castle is in France. And then afterwards, uh, his uh, descendants, uh, they uh, conquered Scotland. So why right. the Scottish roots. <laughs> so, so interesting. Yeah. That's so cool. So your husband and I both have television series with our families. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's so amazing. And my, my, um, my in-laws, they didn't even know uh, like such far distance uh, history behind it so they were very excited when i when i brought all these documents and oh my god oh my god <laughs> oh that's cool so even better it was a surprise that's fantastic yeah and and i'm from latvia which is not far from scandinavia so obviously we have like mix of russia and, and polish and vikings as well so it was neat uh, you know the connection that it still stems back to very close uh, uh, neighborhood anyway <laughs> that is that's so much fun yeah yeah, fantastic. I, I, <laughs> I could talk hours about it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I hear you on that. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm a little dehydrated from last night. But yeah, my God. got the water going. You are <laughs> such a troopers. <laughs>
<laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It was actually really great. Um, I got to know um, some people that I didn't know as well, because certain people I speak to more often, like yourself and um, Angel and Hazel and other things like that. So it was uh, more people that I got to know as well in the community, which, you know, is always fun. So it was really fantastic. Yeah, I, I love it. That's why uh, when we started the live series with my husband, uh, which we com was completely a fluke, uh, but now we are getting these people as guests and, and talking, you know, about the the stories behind the chat, behind the people behind the channels, as I'm saying. And it's amazing to get to know people. It's so much, so much different than then looking at the channel, you know, when you actually get to talk and uh, about life, you know, about where they come from and what do they do besides the channel. It, I, I just love it. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly where um, my interview show that, you know, is coming up soon came from. That's why I named it Interview You Stories, because yeah. um, um, every, and then everyone has to interview you stories. Everyone has a story because I was doing my live vlogs every Wednesday. And um, I realized I was like, wait a second, I'm telling these stories. And <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> And I'm going, wait, everybody has these stories. It would be so fun. Like you guys are also doing, you know, to see the people behind the channel. So, you know, it's, I put it, everyone has a story or multiple story. You know, it's so cool. Tell so me it's, more, more about to your plans, uh, about the, your interviews. Well, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get some water. Of course, on a live stream, that's where your throat goes. <laughs> oh, <that's> okay. <laughs> um, like I said, um, I came up with it when I started doing um, live vlogs, um, I believe three weeks ago or something like that. It just came to mind and um, I was finding everybody so interesting. So Angel said to me, she said, well, I'll be on it. So she's going to be my first guest and um, I don't have a date and time yet. It will be coming very soon. But um, I was surprised at the fantastic response that I'm getting of so many people want to be on it. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. So it's going to have its own time slot. It's, um, and what I do, in, I, I want people to be very comfortable. Um, as I said, I, I um, told people to email me at borgiaglobal at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And I like to conduct a pre-interview first to see what the person wants to talk about, right. be it their channel, their cells, and also if there's anything they don't want to talk about. Because just because we're on YouTube, it doesn't mean that, you know, everybody wants everything out there. Yeah. So I want to know if there's anything they don't want me to ask. You know, I, as I put it, I don't want to turn into a Maury Povich thing where, you know... <laughs> It's, you know, getting strange. Somebody's got something personal. You never know. So, and then we're I'm going to start weekly. And then we've got so many people so far that if it continues that way, then I might bring it up to twice a week. And um, it'll be on here through Google Hangouts. And as soon as I get a time, this is the one thing that I'm curious about. Um, because there's people from so many different places is if one time will be suitable for everyone. I'm working on that, but I also don't want to bounce it around too much because then, you know, it's yeah. nice to have a regular schedule. So that's pretty much to it. And yeah, they could be their channel, their stories. Um, gosh, Angel is my first guest and um, Wonder Music, I believe is my second guest. And then it's going from there. Hazel will be on. Hazel Yuri. Um, oh, my goodness. Um, I want to say Enzo. I'm trying to think of the names. I don't have my list in front of me. But uh, Fish Sandwich Show um, asked if he wanted to be on. So it's really, really cool. I was really excited how many people really were interested in it. So um, the like Fish Sandwich Show, it's Robert that will be appearing himself because yeah. he says uh, the director gets to do everything else so this time it'll be Robert okay <laughs> and if anyone's familiar with the fish sandwich show so uh, yeah it's just really cool I'm very very excited about it um, that's one of the cool things about this channel and getting involved in it is um, I do makeup and special effects arts and everything else but I always knew that I wanted my channel to be um, you know 
I have a, m multiple different areas and I like to arrange them by playlist. Yeah. So there's a bit of, a, you know, a little bit of everything from me <laughs> that I'm interested in. There's the beauty, um, health and lifestyle um, that we talked about when I um, had my um, invisible disease um, video come up because I have rheumatoid arthritis and other things where I want to put videos out to help other people with things that I've found mm -hmm. that have autoimmune or anybody because everybody has an immune system. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can always feel better. So it's just really cool that, you know, you can take things in different directions and um, have such a fun time creating on here. So it's, I'm very excited about all of it. Yeah, that's the amazing part too. Uh, you know, like we started at this channel too, mostly as a side channel for our business because mainly we are business. We do photos and videos for clients uh, here in Canada and sometimes outside. And um, it was mostly for that, uh, you know, some of the videos and maybe just some of that. Were it's so important, especially, I know you're in films and production and whatnot, but for all businesses nowadays, having videos is key. And yeah. you, there's actually a business behind mine eventually too, but I'm sorry, go ahead. It's, yeah. you know, it's really interesting. I might be asking you about things. <laughs> Yeah, well, we we always say to help and share the skills and 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 talents. So if uh, we already have uh, some of the people that uh, people uh, that were looking for uh, thumbnails and and uh, YouTube, you know, uh, cover art and intros and things like that. So uh, you know, we're always here to help. That's what community is all about. So <laughs> yeah, I have no cover art. Everything I've tried to upload says it's too small. It's too this. It's too that. And so. I'm well, working on it. <laughs> well, we can get in touch about that for sure. I I don't mind. I actually like doing graphics, uh, I, although it's not my like main job. My main job is photography. Right. But, uh, I I enjoy really making graphics for social media and things like that. So definitely, we can we can figure something out there. <laughs> that would be great. I would be very appreciative, and I'd love to learn about doing it because as an artist, that's just you know another place to you know have fun with it and everything like that. Yeah, we, we're uh, starting to, uh, Tuesday Tech Talk and uh, we're going to be talking more about like these kind of things as well as other like technical questions. And uh, probably one, not uh, not this Tuesday, but maybe next Tuesday, we're going to do like a tutorial for one of these things that are uh, for YouTube. Like either uh, we did a little bit of thumbnails, but maybe we'll do a cover art. We'll see. Uh, let's do a little tutorial to, to show how uh, how it's easy to do, you know. That would be great because I know um, in some of your other live streams, I've learned a lot from you guys, the technical side and everything like that. So that would be fantastic. I would definitely be watching. I mean, I come and watch you guys anyway, but I definitely would be interested in that. Um, unfortunately, my father was a photographer um, as a hobby, but he was professional quality as well as my uncle. But unfortunately, my father has passed. My uncle lives across the country. So... You know, I love photography and a lot of things like that, but they've gone well beyond, you know, mm -hmm. into it. So I have a lot to learn and catch up on and everything like that. So I definitely will be watching and oh, telling okay. people about that. I know a lot of people would love that. Thank you. I wanted to turn to the chat uh, for a, a quick second. Uh, just sure. to welcome everybody that is here. Uh, so just to show a quick shout out to you guys that are there, Trainman, NC Locks, Beer Bill and Travelers Hi, uh, JD Diva, Brock Tech Tips, Three Star Travelers, I so appreciate you coming in. <laughs> uh, Midnight Raven is there too. Um, uh, I see Razor. Hi, Razor. Yeah. I see a lot of people in here. Yeah, Entertain45, William Bennett, YouTube, Halos and Havens, hi, they were uh, our guests yesterday. And oh, awesome, yeah, they're going to um, be guests at some point, they're another one that's going to be a guest on our show, um, on my show at some point, and uh, I was, um, I've been watching them too. Yeah, so, they yeah. amazing, uh, we were planning just, uh, you know, like an hour, hour maybe, a talk with guests, because usually we have a little talk at the beginning and a little segment at the end. Well, we ended up talking for two and a half hours, I think, because we just couldn't stop. <laughs> I've, I've had that happen. That happened in my live stream last Wednesday. I meant for it to be an hour. And um, 
each time it keeps going longer. This first time it went an hour and 13 minutes and I went, okay. The second time it went an hour and a half. The third time it went two hours because the conversation just kept going and going and people were, you know, the chat was joining in a lot and it's just really fantastic. Um, oh, Geeks Paranormal, uh, they come on, I think, um, the Geeks Historian, the um, Paranormal Society, they were in last night and they will eventually be on. In fact, um, they are starting their own radio show or their, yes, I think, I believe in April. So that was exciting for them. I don't know if they've stepped in tonight. Hopefully they will. Yeah. But um, yeah, I see a lot of people that I see a lot. That's really cool. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> uh, Capped Cook is there and Drone Review Man and... Uh... I seen that Gregory was saying that he was right that mostly men are going to be trashing the party. Well, there's some girls too here, I see. <laughs> uh, hey, as long as you're in your PJs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you have, we trust that you have your PJs on. Uh, yeah, PJs on. Uh, Bullfighter Gaming Army, Rosarian Buck. Uh, hi. Uh, that's so amazing. Uh, all of you guys. Kyle, Mommy Rose. Thank you so much. That's amazing. I wasn't quite sure uh, like how and what this is going to go because it's, it's a different format and I'm alone. I'm not used to just me. <laughs> uh, well, but you're doing fantastic. I do it alone all the time, so I'm used to it, but you're great. rolling great. <laughs> Senya, you're doing fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned, uh, and actually that's how I first uh, saw your uh, channel about uh, makeup and and art behind it. I'm very excited to hear more about that. Where did oh. you get that? How did you learn it? Uh, and well, that's very interesting because I see um, I did a lot of makeup people and makeup gurus. Um, I've seen it going around a lot lately. They do a, um, like a getting to know you question list. And one of the questions is always, you know, how did you start, so on and so forth, or what was your first piece of makeup? And I'm going, geez, I don't remember my first piece of makeup because I got started probably about six years old because my mother was is an artist um, and she was also a model. And wow. the agency that she was with wanted to sign me. We lived in um, California, uh, Southern California. That's where I'm originally from. I live uh, right outside New York City now. Okay. And... So I was around it and the hairdressers and the makeup artists and my mother was quite skilled in it. She actually taught a class to the other models to because they had to go on go sees and whatnot and be able to put themselves together reasonably well. So people will hire them. If people don't know what a go see is, it's literally you go see the designer as a model. Then they look at you, have you walk and see if they like you and they're going to hire you. And oh, wow. um, like a cast, yeah, but, uh, like face to face casting almost. Yeah. So you have to be able to put yourself together and the stores and the designers, they get to know certain models. That's when they say, I want so-and-so, I want so-and-so. But a lot of the younger girls starting out, you got, it's a lot of work. Okay. And uh, yeah. yeah, and there's also, you need a thick skin because there's a lot of people that say no and maybe aren't so pleasant <laughs> sometimes. Especially but um, time. they asked me to sign, the agency wanted me to sign, and my mother said, listen, I'm going to leave it up to you. I know you like the makeup and everything else, because she taught me how to use it. And um, little did I know, I had some very beautiful high-end products <laughs> to use. <laughs> and um, I ended up saying no, because she said, listen, you know, you'll have to work Saturdays. You need to, if you commit, you commit. So I said no thank you but I've always loved that because to me it's makeup is an expression um right. it's not I know some people believe think of a mask but to me um I don't always wear it every day but when I do wear it sometimes I go and wear it all the time but it's always different because it's an expression of that day and I change up things a lot I use hair as an accessory. I mean, my hair last year was blonde, but totally different style, whatnot. And it's so much fun to teach people to do it. And because a lot of people think, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I can't put my eyeliner on. It's hard. And I really like showing people how, um, because it, I'd say, just take your time, 
take a little practice, you can, you can do some really cool stuff. And I love self-expression. Mm -hmm. I think that's just so much fun. And um, especially, you know, personally, I who doesn't like to feel pretty? I mean, I know men don't realize this, but a lot of the time we usually, I'm sorry, I do my makeup for myself. <laughs> I think most of the women do it mostly and first, first foremost for themselves. Yeah. And not that we don't do it for you guys too, but, but I think first and foremost, most of us do do it for ourselves because we like the look or whatnot. And then the special effects makeup um, I've also done since I was a child and I'm always still learning with that. Um, I just loved it. I um, Sometimes it's scary stuff. The one character that I've done over and over and over, and it's always different, are vampires mm -hmm. since the third grade. I remember my mother teaching me that at eight years old, how to start that out. Yeah. And in my studio, I have all kinds of everything from beauty makeup and whatnot to liquid latex, boxes of sequins and glitter and little doodads and knickknacks that I use for my characters because, you um, your Instagram page. Yeah, sure. Um, my special effects Instagram page is Borgia freestyle M U A. Uh, yeah, I think I'm on it. So I just, yeah, my photography it. is not the best I was using for a lot of it an old note three, which was had a terrible, terrible camera on it. Yeah, that's, if you scroll down a bit, some of them, like the Love Hurts Valentine's Day is, it's pretty creepy and stuff. Um, this is amazing. Yeah, that's so, some, a lot of stuff. Um, I just sit down and it just happens organically. I let the brush go where it's going to go. Oh yeah, she was fun. This She's one amazing. that just popped up. I had no plans and they, a lot of them come just organically and I had those um, berries on the top of my head. I found them in the part of the craft supplies that I keep. So that's part of, I'm like a little scavenger. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, you can go out and buy it. And there's things that I have pre-planned. I'm going to do Patsy Houlihan. And oh. um, ah, there's the Nutcracker. And there's in front of Bergdorf Goodman's, um, their fashion windows at the holidays, which is really cool because my grandmother, oh, this is another way I got into it, I just realized. Um, my grandmother was um, a fashion designer. She went uh, to fashion school, um, design school in New York City as a very young woman. And she was an amazingly talented artist. And she was picked up as a designer for Bergdorf Goodman's, which um, if people aren't familiar, it's on Fifth Avenue near the Plaza Hotel. And it is a very high end, beautiful store on Fifth Avenue. And um, she was a designer there. And Edith Head, who was of Beverly Hills, was a huge costume designer back then. And um, she saw my grandmother's work and stole her away and um, to work in Beverly Hills. So my grandmother used to do all the costumes and whatnot. She would point them out in the old movies for Edith Head. And she would tell stories about how Rita Hayworth didn't wear undergarments to fittings <laughs> and little funny stories like that. So yeah, and then when she got married, she ended up uh, in those days, you didn't necessarily carry on. So she stopped and then she started painting. Her paintings went all over the world. So it comes a lot from my mother and my grandmother. So I've been doing it since wow really early my other page has some stuff on it my main page um lady borgia it's just lady borgia on instagram but like you said i definitely want to upgrade my pictures so no but this is amazing collection i i uh how long does it take to uh to, to do something like that i mean uh, you can see that i i will uh i care one picture that i'm especially oh yeah um well the different ones, if you pull up the Lady Borgia one, there's a skull on there. Like this one right there, that's Borgia Freestyle MUA. My Valentine's Day, in, because those are heart-shaped sequins individually glued onto my lips. Yeah, yeah I'm crazy. <laughs> it actually doesn't take that long. I can teach everyone to do it. And that's what I want to do is show people actually they can do this too. But other characters like on my other page, um, Lady Borgia, on Instagram, there's um, a sugar skull um, 
for Dio de los Muertos, uh, Day of the Dead. And that took, oh my goodness, probably about six hours. Yeah, I think that one's on my other page. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try and bring it up. Uh, I get completely lost when I'm doing them though. Um, like I said, some of them I know, uh, you know, I wanna do this and then I go and other ones I just sit down and um, just go and see what comes up. And it's pretty cool. I just let the brush go and I didn't do it for a while. I took a break. Now if you keep scrolling down, I haven't done one in a bit. And I took a break for a while and um, I was a little scared. Like, do I remember how to do it? Cause I've always loved to paint on people and things with shapes. Not so much, um, I tried canvas, but it's not my thing. And um, I'd moved, done all this stuff. Oh, that actually there's a tutorial in here for that. That's a double wing cut crease and um this is beautiful it, yeah i have the tutorial on my channel to do that and actually people don't think they can do that they can if you take your time you really can do that yourself <laughs> but yeah if you keep going down there's this um sugar skull and it's a pretty detailed one but yeah it's um it's a lot of fun so it's i paint on people and things <laughs> <laughs> instead of canvases yeah it's coming up there was do you do body painting as well or uh yeah there's a point set it there's the skull this yeah. is thing that was a lot of fun towards the end with the swirls and stuff that you know what i learned from that one don't paint the mouth first because i got really thirsty and hungry but then i i tried to drink through a straw but you don't want to mess up the makeup and i just did it one night for fun so yeah. You go and you do it, and then that um, that particular paint, the paint that I like to work with a lot is um, water-based paint. They have uh, several different brands, and um, special effects paint because it's very gentle on the skin. <clears throat> so you do it, and if you don't put, um, there's a spray to keep it settled a little bit better because you can sweat it off, especially for movies and stuff like that. But you can go in and take the water and whoosh, it comes right off and it's, you know, hours of work. You're like, okay, goodbye now. So <laughs> you gotta take a picture. And if you don't finish, it's like, well, I can't put myself away. Or if you have a model, I can't put them away. So yeah, it's, um, it's a one-stop thing. But I really wanna show people how to do those too because um, people can do a lot more than they think. Yes, yes. definitely. Um, how long did it take for you, for example, to do this one? That one was um, <clears throat> probably about five or six hours. Okay. Yeah, and other ones can easily take, um, I'd say they run anywhere from two hours, unless you're gonna do just like a simple face painting, like a child's thing. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> anywhere from two to upwards of eight hours, it can take. So, and then, um, doing the tutorials for those takes a bit longer because you have to speed it up and then cut certain sections out because, and also I tend to go back and forth because the water-based paint, and I also work with cream paints too, but the water-based paint, you want to let it dry to a certain point. So I'll go work on a different section and then come back. So the tutorials for those are a little bit more involved, but those will be going up too, as well as, um, I used to write horror stories. Oh, I professionally okay. used to write um, scientifically, but I also used to write horror and won some awards as a child, but I never have tried to get them published just for fun. And um, I'm going to start doing the characters and putting a story to it too once I get a chance. So, well, that's <laughs> it's very, there's very a lot. ambitious. Uh, there's a lot. And that's what I love. I love about it so much that there is so much more behind the channel than we are used to. Uh, you know, we I, I thought first, you know, makeup channel, but then you started doing about the chronic illness and now you're doing the interviews. And now, of course, of course starting, oh my God, it, it's so amazing. You know, we ne I would have never thought how much behind there is, you know, and I think every channel is amazing with that. I agree. I absolutely agree. That's, that's the same reason I wanted to do my interview thing because there's so much behind the channel. And I think sometimes we used to, we see the channel and you see a couple of videos and classify a channel as, yeah, it's a makeup channel. That's a gamer channel. That's a, and I thought of my channel this way when I started, <clears throat> excuse me again, I'm so sorry. Um, 
I thought about my channel, like a television channel, um, almost like a network where you have a channel and it has, you know, maybe a certain format to it, but it has different shows. Right. So right. for my channel and some channels are different. They have it, you know, one show and that's their thing and that's great, but that's the beauty of it. You can customize it to yourself. So when I wrote my about originally, I went, well, you know, I'm going to do this and this. And of course, more ideas have come since then. And I kind of made it more like a network. So beauty, health and lifestyle with exercise and diet, uh, makeup, beauty, special effects, people, you know, so a lot of stuff like that. It's it really is you, too. <laughs> That's right. So. That's right. Exactly. Well, and, and I agree, it is a lot like a TV channel. And, and there are, I find, like, we don't have a, TV, a regular TV anymore and, and haven't had it for years now because most of the stuff is on, on YouTube or online if it's not on YouTube. And, and you can see already uh, some channels getting their niches in, you know, like the food channel gets replaced by one or a couple of channels that are bigger on food uh, creation or, or makeup, you know, like uh, Slice or TLC and things like that. So it, it definitely kind of replicates the regular TV. And, and the more, the longer we start watching it as TV, the more it, it falls into these niches. So don't even need anything else. And uh... Yeah, I actually have been watching um, I don't want television um, because there's a lot of stuff going on, but when I, I've been watching a lot more YouTube, even more so lately, and I actually read an article recently that they're saying YouTube is kind of taking over from regular television because people are finding it interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and that's one thing, anything that I have on makeup, whatnot, if anybody ever has something they want to see or a tutorial or something, please make a comment. I would be happy to. I, I love suggestions and stuff like that. If somebody wants to know how to do something, you know, I will definitely put it on my list. Um, I was actually going to be a surgeon and um, yeah. <laughs> um, I love surgeons. Actually, a lot of surgeons are artists because there is an artistry to it and um, it is very detailed work. And um, I was going to be a neurosurgeon and was on my way to it, but um, definitely would not work with rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia because um, you cannot stop in the middle and say, oh, I don't feel good. I need to lay down. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't I, think I, anybody I, would appreciate that. I agree. I find uh, like I have, as I was telling you, but probably nobody else knows on the chat, I have fibromyalgia and I, I noticed that uh, I have sometimes hard time holding camera for long periods of times because of that. So definitely surgeon or doctor wouldn't be the best practice for that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I can, the paintbrush, I can hold well and that's, but um, stuff, my, my music, um, I have a, you know, I started piano when I was three. I have a bass guitar, a guitar, whatnot. It's, I really don't get to do those much. Just the manual dexterity, it's, difficult. And like you said, even just trying to hold things for a long period of time, um, a paintbrush doesn't bother me so much. It's so light and you're really not pressing hard or doing like that. But even a camera, yeah, your hands get tired, your body starts to ache and it's not just the pain. I just, you well know, you get tired, you yeah. need to rest. There's a lot of aspects to it that a lot of people don't realize in it. And especially since it's not visible, you know, both of us look perfectly fine. Yes, exactly. So, and I actually, I did not intend on doing that video originally, but I kept mentioning in my videos, you know, about it, why I was doing something a certain way or why I hold things a certain way. And I went, you know what, I'm just going to do rather than trying to explain every time I said, you know what, I'll just do a video about it. And that's, that's great you did it. And and uh, I, I think I watched that video three times. <laughs> oh wow, thank you so much. Because <laughs> I I just I you know it's hard. I think when we when we deal with invisible illnesses like that, it's it's hard to even for ourselves to voice like how we feel about it. And I, I think the way you were explaining it and talking about it really resonated with the way I feel about uh, my fibromyalgia and uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. So I, I watched it three times because I'm like, <laughs> I, I I felt so touched by what you were saying. So uh, great video. 
Thank you so much. I'm glad that it reached out to somebody because I mean, I don't mind talking about it at all. And you know, I figured why not explain it? And then also I know there's many people who are affected and everything like that. And the whole thing originally stemmed from, um, I wanted to do, um, when I got the disease and I have several more now, they keep, once you have one autoimmune disease, a lot of the time they'll keep popping up and other syndromes and whatnot. Yeah. But a lot of the time uh, diet, exercise, there's a lot of things that can help. And way back in the beginning, cause mine hit literally like a Mack truck. I say in the video, you know, I went to sleep to take a nap. I woke up and I had this and you know, if anybody wants to know the details, I'll let them watch the video. But, um, when I started going to arthritis classes, you know, water, arthritis, this and that, I love people of all ages. I have friends, younger, older, I always have. But when you go to a class and you're the only person there and everybody's 30 to 40 years older than you or more, it can be a little disheartening because, you know, I had friends there that was great, but you know, I wanted more things because there are a lot of people who are younger that have this and various diseases. And I wanted to produce an exercise program and whatnot and diet and other things that I found for people. But I already have one business I was starting to do and that's a lot. So I thought, well, um, I um, had a boyfriend who was a physician. He said, why don't you start a blog? And I was going to do that. And then I went, well, wait a second. Why don't I just share all the information as, you know, on YouTube as a series? So eventually someday I'd like to put it out there and have some kind of classes and stuff like that for people who have stuff like this, because I found some things that really can make a huge difference. I have to stop every so often. And because sometimes I'll go into a really bad flare because it always is painful. I always have the symptoms. I've never gone into remission, but there are times where it gets bad enough that I have to stop um, even things like exercise that's beneficial because it's just too much. So I repeatedly had to start over again and go back up, but I want to show people, Hey, that's okay. You can do it again. And if you have to take a break because of illness or medical, it's okay. It's still going to be there. You can still go back and work your way up and feel better. I'm actually about to restart again. And it's just, I kind of accept it because there is no cure and um, it really, really helps. So as you know, when I can do it, that I would do it very much. And my doctors are thrilled with me. They're like, we love what you're doing. You can't do anything else. I was like, okay, that's what I want to hear, that I'm doing everything I can to help myself. So yeah. I think I pass it forward. It is a lot of research, I find. So obviously, when, when we find somebody who we can relate to with how they are dealing with it, uh, it's it really helps. It's kind of part of that support support system, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you know, I think there would be a lot of people who would love to to watch content like that for sure, because there's a lot of people that are dealing with um, with chronic like illnesses, invisible illnesses. Uh, I know like in, in uh, Canada, uh, there is 1.5 million people with chronic pain. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a lot <laughs> yeah uh, you know uh so so that's a lot of people dealing with something that is chronic and and depressing sometimes and it's good that we can talk about it but i because i think um it, it hasn't been such a long time that people actually started talking about these things like openly you know right well you know <clears throat> uh, one thing people because um Actually, I, there's a girl on um, Instagram that I met, and while I had talked to her over a period of time, she found out she had fibromyalgia. She was diagnosed during the course. I, I think I met her through Instagram last year. And um, a lot of people, there is, for. I didn't get the depression. I, I'm someone who's more so towards anxiety because, I, um, not so much now, but before because certain things you can't do like you used to do and i tend to be a little bit of an overachiever with like i want to do this i want to do that i get very excited about things yeah and physically you have limitations that you didn't have yeah so it's very normal to get anxious or <clears throat> excuse me to get depressed or sad and you know let people know and like you said to have a support system because people see you and um 
go, well, you're fine. But it's, it's really not that bad, right? You're not really sick. And um, yeah, I am. It's not who I am or anything like that. It's not how I define myself. But it's not something I can ignore either. And it wouldn't be healthy to ignore it, you know. So no, you can't ignore it because there's you're right. You can't ignore it because there's completely new limitations. You gotta you gotta learn how to do things differently. Uh, so Absolutely. by ignoring it, it's not getting better. It just gets worse. So it's uh, you can't ignore it. But it's hard sometimes. It's hard, I think, emotionally to accept that you have to do things differently. Yes, absolutely, because um, I've always been a very active person and um, I've always had a lot of interest and really loved learning and getting into things and helping other people. And at first, even having to, um, am I echoing? Uh, having I, I wasn't going to necessarily tell people in the beginning because I didn't want to burden them or anything else but suddenly you know I was having to cancel on social events that you know I wouldn't have previously canceled on because I needed to rest I didn't feel good that day yeah and especially in the beginning you're working it out it's you know there's a huge learning curve of wait my life was this way and it was super active and now what, what do I do? I used to ski all the time. I've been an equestrian on my, almost my whole life. I used to go to camp every summer to ride horses every day, you know. Um, all this stuff, I used to ski, oh my gosh, a ridiculous amount. <laughs> and those are a lot of things that, I mean, I might be able to do very easy trails on a good day, but I mean, black diamonds and whatnot are out now. It's not a good idea. And it's, gee, even daily things like socializing. And that's when my mother said to me, she said, you know what, let them know. And I said, yeah, that's true. I want to let them know because I don't want people to think, oh, now I don't care about the friendship. I'm just begging out. But I also didn't want to say, oh, I, you know, I, I don't think people realize we don't want pity, just maybe understanding. Yes, exactly. And uh, understanding is the right word because no pity is not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, but understanding, yes, because it is hard to explain sometimes why you have to uh, refuse a social event for over and over again. You know, it's it's not personal. It's not because I don't want to. It's I know that I can't. Right. Uh, and and it's hard. It's it's a it's a learning curve all on its own for sure. Uh, it's it's kind of the a learning how to put that old me uh, in a box. It's hard to say. I don't know. Uh, like, yeah, yeah like kind of like put it away. And now this is me, but it's a new me. You know, it's a 2.0. <laughs> exactly. I see in your chat um, two things. Um, one of them is back to the makeup thing. And it's a question for you. Um, and the other thing is um, Halos and Heathens, I did not know. She says, I can relate. After my brain injuries, it was interesting to have to learn to accept the new me. It's a learning plus for me. Neil, um, I did not know that about Neil. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's they, exactly. I, I, I also seen that Three Star Travelers was saying that uh, her uh, mom uh, is suffering from uh, fibro. And, oh, really? Yeah. And uh, Gregory Salvatore's wife has fibromyalgia as well. It's, you know, it's amazing how prevalent it is now because, I mean, my father was a doctor and um, I was around the medical community, a lot of MDs, PhDs, whatnot. And so I heard a lot of things I guess most children wouldn't hear, but, you know, when you're a little kid like that, that's just very normal. <laughs> and um, it's just part of your life, you know, like any other kid, whatever your parents do, you hear about. And... Um, you know, you really didn't hear so much about fibromyalgia and as many young people having rheumatoid arthritis. There's, um, I believe, 1.5 million people in the United States that have rheumatoid arthritis. And that's just one type of arthritis and one type of autoimmune disease. It's, yeah. just, it's curious why it's become so prevalent, but they don't know. So... Yeah, I, I think it's the way we, uh, you know, some of these are not even able to d diagnose by having tests like fibromyalgia right now. They have only recently uh, just like thought of what it could be the cause of it. So obviously tests are coming up. 
but I think people are just more openly talking about things that bother them because before it was well it's all in your head right yes if you don't have a broken leg or we can't see it in your blood test well it's in your head you must must be crazy <laughs> and well yeah and you know what that still happens to a lot of people nowadays um um i was shocked to find how many people it takes years to get a diagnosis for fibromyalgia rheumatoid arthritis and other things because um, one of the first things I did the day I was diagnosed was um, with rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. And they said, you know, I had a particular severe form of rheumatoid arthritis. It tends to be symmetrical. If you have one joint, you have the other joint on the other side, as opposed to um, osteoarthritis, which is more so wear and tear on your joints as you age, which I would have had that regardless from being in so many sports. But um, yeah, that was coming. But um, this, I had 20 plus joints to begin with, and now it's pretty much everything from the neck down. And I was in shock. I did not expect this. And I was diagnosed six weeks in. I got very lucky that my, because um, I was in the hospital very suddenly. Then my doctors did all the testing. They thought Lyme's, um, certain viruses, got me to a rheumatologist within six weeks and got me um, a diagnosis. But a lot of people, they don't get the diagnosis and they're suffering and suffering. And I had a girlfriend that gout, which is another autoimmune disease, runs in the family. And it's a buildup of certain um, crystalline structures in the joints. And it's very painful. Her father has it. Her grandmother has it. She has all the markers for it. But the doctor said, well, and all the symptoms, well, you don't have it because you're too young. So I think a lot of people, that's what happened in the past. It's, you know. I don't see it or I don't want to classify it as that or for whatever reason. And so she still to this day suffers with it. And she, her husband's with the army. So they have a limited choice of, you know, which physicians to go to. Right. So, and I, I can't believe how she manages with that. Uh, I think oftentimes it, it also depends on the uh, healthcare provider because uh, and it's hard to find, like it took me almost two years to even find anybody who knew what it is, you know. Uh, so exactly. It's, it's hard. It's hard road. And, and I'm lucky I'm in Montreal. So obviously there's lots of hospitals and specialists here, um, which still was hard enough. But if you're in the more remote areas, um, then I, I really feel for people, especially if you get um, to the doctor that once again, says it's all in your head, you know, it's, it just makes it so much harder. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I feel blessed that I was diagnosed in six weeks, but cause I went on, I got home that day and I didn't know what to do with myself. I'm like, okay, whoa. And I called my mother and then I went, what do I do? <clears throat> A little lost, you know, to just go on with regular life that day. And I went on the computer and actually went and searched for some chat rooms or chat boards because mm -hmm. I went, well, I want to talk to somebody who has this. And that was actually probably one of the best things I could have done for myself because people started telling me, you know, avoid stress. People don't understand, but stress will affect you, you know, way more than it will a regular person. And a lot of other helpful hints that I was really glad that I made that decision to seek out other people with it. So that's another reason why I wanted to share because this, the diagnosis, you can wait for, you know, two years, um, finding someone to talk to and go, Hey, what the heck is happening? <laughs> you know? So it's, you know, yeah. and then that's another thing with the makeup and stuff is, um, that's something I can still do. And like I said, I've, it had been a while and then I went back to it and I went, you know, it's something I could still do. And, not think and you know even if i don't feel the best i mean sometimes no but you get lost in it and even if you don't feel good a lot of the times stuff like that can help you know make you forget about not feeling so good that day definitely reaching out uh, in, in internet forums and and online i mean we have the privilege now of, of trying to find you know forums and websites and things like that. Also face-to-face -face support groups. Um, uh, there's lots of uh, pain management groups often offered by the hospitals if there is any nearby where it's even, um, 
I think it's even better to have that face-to-face -face exchange, you know, about the experiences, how everybody manages and deals with both physical but emotional part as well. It's definitely yeah. important support for sure. Uh, Halos and Hazen says, I'm the proud owner of post-traumatic brain injury syndrome due to many concussions. It's very strange not to be who I was anymore, but it's a good excuse for my crazy LOL. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good attitude. It's a good, healthy attitude, though. <laughs> I think I'm going to use that, borrow that for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could all do that. That's 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 great. My God. Oh, that's, yeah, let's see. I'm just, you know, from that, it's that. <laughs> I like to paint my face and dress up. It's that. <laughs> that's excellent. I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> yes, my goodness. Oh. Uh, um acmr ross thank you for support they were just sharing it on facebook our stream thank you so much um gregory says when the doctor says you're too young or it's in your head your response should be did your parents have any children that survived <laughs> well you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be nice to your doctor because sometimes it's the only person that actually connects you to medical community so at least it's a door, uh, you know, door in, so to say. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. I uh, Now I have an amazing team that works with me, but it, it has been a long, uh, long road for sure. So, Oh, yeah. there's. Um, I'm actually in the process of switching. My original rheumatologist was great for a while. And then he just kind of, we went through all the various medications. I've been through the mill on the various ones and the biologics where you get a shot every week. Thankfully, um, one of them used to have to go in for infusions and they finally made it into a shot form that you could have at home. And I said, well, what are we going to do if this doesn't work and that doesn't work because things weren't working and I wasn't responding to certain things. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, we'll just keep going and going till we find something. And if I can't find it, you know, New York City is here. We're going to keep going. And then he stopped. And it was kind of like he just took a back seat and went, oh, yeah, that's it. And I'm going, wait, 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 no, why? He just kind of stopped and he's very well known in the area for being a great rheumatologist, but I think he has way too many patients. Yeah. And his office staff um, could be fairly rude, you know, really unnecessarily to, in fact, the patients in the waiting room are going, you know, what the heck, you know, it was known for that. So and I guess it was just kind of like, well, he's one of the best, so you just have to put up with this. And we finally moved on to somebody else. But once again, some of the best ones, um, I was with her for a couple of years, except I would get, you had to wait three months to get in with her. And then she'd say, well, I want to see you back in three months. And you go to make your appointment before you leave. Yeah. And she would, uh, the, the people at the desk would say, well, we can't give you an appointment right now. We're booked. And I said, well, okay. So then they would call me, give me an appointment. We'd get all the way to the three months and then they would cancel it and then push it back again. And then she would get upset with me and say, but you haven't been in. And I said, but I can, you, your people are canceling it. They're overbooking. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can't force my way in your office. <laughs> I'll get arrested, <laughs> you know? So uh, I talked to, wonderfully, I have a primary care physician. My internist is, I call him a rock star. He is just the most amazing man ever. I've been with him for quite a few years, and he is so understanding and gets it. And he said, go to somebody new. That's not right. You yeah. know, they're just, her office staff is obviously not communicating their errors to her. And, you know, that's unfair you, know, you can't be waiting six because then it would push you back another three months and now it's six months i haven't seen my specialist so people you know sometimes you they you kind of try to push you into putting up with stuff like that and i tell people no go and look i mean i had to go to a pain specialist at one point because we left a doctor that was taking care of it and um the rheumatologist initially was also um, trying to handle the pain aspects and the new rheumatologist um, didn't do that, and but we had to drive an hour to it, and then there was often a three-hour wait there, but that's what we had to do because that's who was available to go to. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
So sometimes now we're trying to have a choice, uh, you know, when yeah. there's many specialists, it just sometimes you can't choose, unfortunately. Yeah. And I live in a fairly, I mean, I live just below New York City. I mean, I'm in, you know, very, you know, in tri-state area is very metropolitan area. Um, yeah, we have tons, but sometimes it can still even be difficult. So when you said, uh, I can v relate, I've thought about that. You know, what if I lived in a more rural area? You know, goodness, what what do you do? Exactly, exactly. It, it, is, it is hard. Like uh, Gregory uh, is also saying about his wife that uh, it's uh, the doctor is not only the problem. Uh, they're fighting to get disability for three years, and her doctor wants to put her on Lyrica but the insurance refuses to pay for it. Yes, that's, that's the part also that I have to deal with it for sure. It's, it's hard to prove something that is undiagnosable by certain tests, you know? Yeah, that can be, I've heard of people fighting for disability and it's very strict in this country um, being able to get disability. Mm -hmm. um, certain piece, some people have to go through years uh, of fighting with it and attorneys and whatnot to get it. And, it's really not fair because um, in this country, um, Social Security Disability, SSD, you've paid in for and through your job. You can't get it if you haven't paid enough in. There's a second type, SSI, if you um, haven't paid enough into Social Security for it. Yeah. And so people that have paid their due share into the system, you know, and now need the assistance are having trouble getting it. And they're giving them, you know, issues. And plus other people, um, some people will look down on them and as if it's, um, you know, a welfare type thing. And that's, it's no, they've paid into the system to do this. It's not a handout, you know, and then they can't get it back what they've paid in. And that's what the whole system was meant to do. Our social security, our social security system is a mess. I mean, I have to be honest. <laughs> Uh, it, it's with everything uh, you know like in Canada for example a certain amount of uh, uh, medicine drugs gets covered by the uh, right my best friend is Canadian yeah oh <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah and it's uh, it's good but on the other hand like the the drugs that I get prescribed because of my fibromyalgia uh, oftentimes they are not covered and and you know so and they can cost like hundreds of dollars a month, and if oh you yeah, get the support. It's 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 hard to get through it for sure. I don't think I'm quite there yet. I I am still in the part of accept, accepting part of it. I think, and and by applying for something like that, I think it. I don't know if I'm emotionally ready. Like a confirmation. Yeah, emotionally. Yeah, I'm still there, even if I don't confirm it. Yeah. <laughs> No, I understand that. That makes a lot of sense to me because it's almost like saying like, yes, you know, it's not really, really there, but it makes, I, I totally understand. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like that final signature, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Not, not there yet quite, but I understand the struggles of it. Uh, when I talk with people, the other people that I have around that uh, struggle with it, I, I understand what Gregory is talking about. We have uh, uh, here alien six, Four six seven also has fibromyalgia. Just came in. Uh, Midnight Raven has a spinal defect and is in pain every day. We can relate to that. Uh, yeah, I can absolutely relate to that. Yeah, uh, Aiden, Joey is in. Hi. Uh, yes, thank you very much for kind words. We're on the serious note today. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Manic Mondays. Yes, yesterday we were talking about uh, uh, guitars and music and uh we decided to do manic mondays with us uh not this monday next monday most likely so yeah well, that's they're fun <laughs> they're gonna be playing some music i guess and talking guitars and there's a couple of people who are gonna be joining in so if you're interested come back on monday oh absolutely i've got my guitar and my bass i don't have my piano anymore but um you yeah play the piano. do you play piano um, I started at three. I have not played recently because I don't have my piano anymore, but, um, and I have difficulty with my hands, but yeah, I can still play. Oh, wow. I started at three and my dad, um, <clears throat> I was actually really lucky. Um, our next door neighbors had a baby grand piano and 
I would go over there and my best friend lived there too. We were also friends with the family. And um, I would watch her practicing. She was a year older than I would. And then I would play it back. Okay. And in fact, her mother, um, actually she was being raised by her grandmother. She said she would call up my mother and say, come on over and visit and, and bring her, bring me because my friend wouldn't want to practice. But when she would see me there and playing the things, you know, just by watching her and by ear that she was supposed to practice, it would kind of like get to her a little bit and be like, oh, I need to practice. Yeah. You know, she's a year younger than me. And um, so that's how it started. And then a good friend of my mother's was a um, concert pianist and she sadly ended up divorcing and she had a beautiful studio grand piano, which uh, she didn't want to put into storage because even if you put uh, pianos into piano storage, it's still not good for them. They need to be out and played and whatnot. It still deteriorates the instrument to a bit. Yeah. And I mean, it's better than nothing. You know, it's heat controlled and everything else like that. But the best place is somewhere it can be played and used and whatnot. So I was, she said, you know, here let her have lessons on this. So I had this beautiful grand piano, you know, for my lessons. And then we moved from California and my father bought me my own piano. And um, I had that for a long time. Mm. And uh, sadly there was an incident and a move and everything else like that. So it's not with me anymore, but yeah, I would love to watch a music show too. But um it's just the manual dexterity. I can't. I can't quite keep up with it the same. So that's why I was so. Th I'm thrilled that you know I brushes and stuff like that. So I still have artistic outlets, and um, I have always loved photography and videography and stuff like that. And um, I'm definitely not at your level by any means, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm. That's that's one of my things. My goals is a better camera. But first, I got to get a better computer because the filming and the editing and whatnot I need. In fact, I the, got the information from your husband on the specs on the computer. I had an idea, but it gave me a lot of information and a lot of help. I'm very thankful for that. Um, um, I, I hope it helps because definitely computer, uh, you need a lot of power into that to be able to process video, especially video. Yeah, so that's why I decided the computer has to come before the new camera because yeah. You know, you can work with the camera that I have, and I have a Note 8 phone, which it amazes me that this little box is a computer of a camera that's pretty darn decent. You you can do, you know, you can edit things on here. You can, you know, you can technically run a whole YouTube channel from this little box. Yes, yes, so, for sure. And it's, you know, it takes a bit of creativity, but, you know, you can do a lot with it. But yeah, definitely the new computer has to come first, except I'm a laptop person and I need the um, portability, but oh gosh, they're so much more expensive. <laughs> yeah, I know. I use laptop mostly uh, as well. I just like doing my photo editing and things like that, like everywhere, like sometimes on the floor, sometimes I sit by the window. I just, you know, so I, I definitely, my husband uses both uh, for editing especially, but uh, I, I use laptop. Oh, yeah. Well, it's also when you're not feeling well, um, I will get in bed and sit and work on things and work on my business, work on other things. And I'm going, well, I'm sitting in bed, but I can still get it done. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but with a laptop, it's much more functional for anybody. You know, if you have something you're not feeling well, a desktop, it's great. You can get a lot more power for a lot less money and everything like that. And but it just it's it's not as feasible for me. So. Yeah, I remember you saying that day that you were a laptop person as well. <laughs> yeah, always have been. I have had a desktop too, but I always ended up with the laptop anyway. So we just <laughs> downsized for me to the laptop, better to invest in a better laptop than than in you know both desktop and laptop. So yeah, yeah. So definitely, that's that's the next on my list. And I was thankfully for his specs because that's definitely a big change. But that's cool. That's that's my next. My next thing is the new thing, and that'll be fantastic. Um, oh I'm looking forward to it for editing. 
<laughs> I forgot to switch off my phone sound. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Joey, for coming in. Joey's just leaving us. I know he's doing his editing on his blog, which I'm so excited to see. Was so excited to see, and now I'm still excited to see it. I hope tomorrow is out. Thank you for stopping by, though. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Gregory, <coughs> nothing compares to the speed and function of a powerful desktop, of course. And if I would, would be doing video editing like my husband does, I wouldn't probably be like the heavy video editing. Yeah. I wouldn't be using a uh, laptop, probably. The thing with, uh, with um, pictures, um, I take all of them in raw and then I have to process them. But the ones that I have stopped working on, I transfer them to the um, hard drive. Uh, we yeah. have internal hard drive storage and that's where they they are. So on my laptop, I don't have everything. And therefore- Yeah, I have an external hard drive as well. Yeah, and, and therefore uh, it doesn't uh, uh, slow down the process. Yeah, so I can it. still do it. If I would be keeping everything on it, obviously it would be too slow. And <coughs> my husband and video, uh, like you, you can't render, uh, you know, a 40 minute video uh, on on a laptop, it just has to be some kind of crazy. <laughs> laptop. Uh, no, no, a professional quality thing like that, absolutely. But yeah. for what I do on YouTube and everything else like that, I think it will sustain me. And if I get into it more seriously, then yeah. I can go for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, you can always upgrade. But I like uh, you said, you have a camera already. What do you have? Oh, just a little, little click Canon thing. Nothing. I I don't have. Um, I have um, SLR cameras, but they're old. I have a ton of old film ones that were my father's, but um, I want to get a Canon. It's what I'm most used to. And I know the Rebels, um, I've heard, are pretty, you know, decent, but some of the ones that I want, so I've been looking and searching around and whatnot. Um, so, no, I have um, nothing fancy. My phone and it's just a simple Canon um, yeah. little camera. You know, with a phone, as you were saying, it's so easy to do anything, especially you have so many apps now too that can uh, enhance, uh, you know, the initial camera and edit in there. Uh, so oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you can all, as you were saying, you can just do everything with a phone. <laughs> this sandwich show is. Um, he was saying that he does everything from his phone. His filming, yeah. his editing, everything. So it's <clears throat> it's amazing what you can do. I mean, yeah, no, I don't expect. Well, actually, they said um, they have filmed certain things with like iPhone sixes. The coolest thing I ever saw was um, one filmmaker. I wish I remember who it was. Filmed um, a short horror film with the backup camera of a car, oh. and. Yeah, film the entire thing with you know with one of the backup cameras, and one of the actresses said, she said normally you know and they're zooming in to do your close-ups on a really scary scene you know like Psycho or something like that you know you know the camera, but she said with this you've got a car literally like backing over you. Gosh, oh. I wish I remember who that was, but yeah, it's out there. Maybe you know I have to do a search. Yeah, they filmed an entire short film with the backup camera of a car because they said nowadays the quality is so much better. You can get away with a lot without spending much and doing stuff. I mean, I never would have thought of that. That's so cool. Yes. Yeah, I would have never thought of that as well. But yeah, why not, right? Uh, Kalos and Eden says they use GoPro. Uh, yeah, and there's so much, so much to choose from. Yeah, I see Patsy says she does everything from her iPhone. Hey, Patsy! Hi, Anna. Well, that's one thing I can't wait. Patsy's going to be one of my guests. And um, when Patsy and I first met, uh, I was really intrigued with her. And I asked her, I said, would you mind if I turned myself into you at some point? Right. Because so um, I like to say, um, I think it says on my special effects page, um, um, shapeshifter extraordinaire. Um, yeah. And she said... She said yes, so um, eventually I'm going to turn myself into Patsy. And then when the interview show came up, I said, wow, that'd be really cool if I could do it and then interview Patsy as Patsy. So not the voice, but looking yeah. like it. So hopefully we can 
pull that one off because I don't think her makeup should take that long to do though. So yeah, that's really doable. interesting. I think, uh, you know, that idea of her, yeah, like it's, it's like split personality almost. <laughs> I was so thrilled that she was like down for it. I was like, oh, excellent. So, yeah, I totally understand the crazy ideas because I have them all the time. They're normal to me. And I, but then I think about it in um, my family, there's a lot of artists and scientists and a mixture of both and musicians. And so I'm going, well, at least it's, it's normal in my family that, you know, I would do something like that. But then I think, hey, wait a second. Not everybody does that in their house. <laughs> Well, we all, all are a little oddballs, I think. <laughs> Proud to be. <laughs> and the more, I, the more we talk with people on our live streams, the more I realize that we are not so odd as I thought we are. <laughs> no. Nope. Like, everybody has their own things. And, and it's actually more common than, than I thought it is. So. <laughs> Absolutely. When I realized, because this was one thing, I, I came to some of this through Instagram because... When I realized, I, I made an Instagram account a long time ago, and I, I think I put like one or two pictures on it and forgot about it. And then I realized that people were putting up the pictures of the makeup and pictures of the special effects and that you could share it through places like that. Yeah. And I went, well, that's really cool because I mean, I've doing, been doing this stuff. I said I took a break for a while and then went back to it. But, you know, before that was so popular to do that, you do it and you take a picture, but that was kind of, you know, it, unless you were doing it for somebody else, it wasn't so much of a platform to share it and have a community for it. And um, it was really cool to find out. There's actually a really neat um, special effects community on Instagram that I've met that has some really neat characters and people do some really cool stuff. And it's just fun to be able to like sit down and where somebody would sit down and paint their painting and share it or sell it to someone, you can sit down in your evening. A lot of us tend to work at night. I don't know why, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know why I don't paint that in the morning. Cause I used to paint, cause I like to paint objects too. I used to paint that in the morning a lot. I used to like to paint in front of the fireplace with that. I still do. I have a fireplace in my studio, but um, looking out the window, watching old movies, but yeah, it's, it's super cool. And it's just, I don't know. It's so fun. <laughs> uh, Felicia Crow, hi. She says she loves it. Instagram too. Yes, I like, I, with my photos, I'm mostly on Instagram. I, I put some stuff on Twitter, but that's mostly for YouTube exposure. But uh, with the photos and things like that, I'm on Instagram. It, it's so fun because you can share it more, even if it's not, you know, because not everything you do is necessarily professionally and, you know, stuff you want to share. I see Patsy just said, after her, I should make myself look like James Cox. <laughs> I could do that. That I think oh, I might no. have to dive into some prosthetics for that. But you know what? That's something I want to learn about. So that might take a bit longer, but I that could be a goal. I think that's it. I think maybe that is a new goal. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Kayla's in heaven, and I use my backup camera for filming horror films too. Sadly, the peeps I back over don't know it's for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. oh my god, uh, there's some new people coming in. Bottle caps, hi. I was wondering, where are you? Uh, camera time is in. Hi, Felicia. Yeah, I see Felicia Crow. I see her around. She, I see all oh, you love Instagram. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of how I ended up coming to here and also because of business and which is too small to talk about right now, but um, it's still in, early on in the planning and whatnot. But yeah, it's kind of how I made my way to YouTube and then I love it here. I like Instagram. It's cool, but their algorithm is also kind of a pain in the butt, but I, I, really I like Instagram more uh, like after Facebook did their, uh, you know, like as a business page, you get seen only like by 1% of, of viewers. And I, we've been yeah. lucky in that way that lots of them actually come back and, and to check our stuff. So the engagement is still there, but still. So I'm not really a fan of it too much. Twitter, yeah. as I said, uh, well, we tweet some stuff uh, with business too, but mostly now it's, it's for YouTube. But Instagram, especially after the latest update where they uh, went back to having a timeline, um, chronologically ordered instead of doing like the most popular ones on top. Uh, I, I kind of like it more now. 
Um, oh, I didn't because I've. I haven't been on Instagram as much lately. I mean, from looking at my thing, I used to post a lot more and I've been more on here and I'm balancing this out because my start was a little bit weird because um, I was I was posting on there a lot more and then I finally decided that I was gonna start, people were asking me for tutorials and stuff like that. And also, like I said, business things that I wanna do. And I went, my brother says, you really need to do YouTube and I had a channel, but I think I had three videos on it and they were all private just for like family to view. Yeah. So the channel says it's been around, I think since 2013, but not actively or public. Right. And um, so I started and then um, I put two on and Christmas and I did a, I was wrapping Christmas presents and all of a sudden I thought, wait, I need to do a parody. It was the day before Christmas Eve day. And I went, I need to do a makeup parody of the night before Christmas, but the night before makeup <laughs> and do instead of Santa Claus mother makeup. So <laughs> there's only hours left before Christmas Eve and I'm wrapping packages and I went, well, I, I got to have this up on YouTube. I want it up for Christmas Eve because in our family and many families, I know it's a, uh, you know, um, a tradition to read the night before Christmas on Christmas Eve night, you know, the actual, right, yeah. So I went, oh, but I want this stuff for the makeup people. I don't know how many people I'm going to get it out to with, but I'm going to try. So I worked my little fanny off, got it rewritten in a couple hours, found this uh, nightgown to make myself into, you know, kind of an updated Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Did my makeup, got in front of the camera, read it off, <laughs> fired it off, quickly edited. I mean, there's a few bumps, but I was so interested in getting it up and got it up there. And I was so fun. And then I took a break because my grandmother passed in January and then I came back in February and I'm here for good. But once I get, um, like this is balancing out now, I can get also back, I, I post my things on Instagram and take pictures of them, but I'd like to start posting more regularly like I used to and I think that should be coming soon and more of my stuff. Well, you're, Luckily, you're people have hung in there. You are so visually appealing that uh, I think Instagram is such a great platform for anything visual, uh, you know. Uh, so definitely, uh, like I, I, again, scrolling through it, I just love it. So definitely Thank come back Thank you more. so much. <laughs> I, I would love to. I, um, I have to, your, is your Instagram linked to the page? Because yep. I'm sure, Fantastic. I'm going to have to go on and um, look at yours and follow you because I, I would love to see your fo photographs. Oh, I love okay. photography. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, a, it's an hour about page and it's linked on the, you know, on the right side there in the corner with all the Twitter and stuff as well. But it's uh, in all the major uh, social uh, things we are at Push Studios. It's the same everywhere. So, Okay, it's that's good. To, yeah, I managed to link those. Just the getting the cover art up, I'm going... It keeps saying it's too small. Then it says it's this. Then it says it's that. And I went, okay, just make the videos. Do it. You get to it. And yeah, exactly. Well, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll work on it. So <laughs> we'll work on it together. Uh, well, Ooh, thank you. I have a, a related question to the makeup, and and we can um, sure. Uh, there is uh, where was this question? Now I wrote it down. Uh, by the way, hi Hazel. Hi. Oh yeah. Hi Hazel. I saw you come in. <laughs> um, I love Hazel. Hazel's going to be on my um, in interview show too. She's got some really fascinating things. Hazel, send some sun. I already asked Halos yesterday. They said it's raining, but maybe it's not raining at your side. It's still snowing today in Montreal. So please, sun, <laughs> expedite <laughs> the package. <laughs> um, Jenna Taylor was asking before if you had to live without a type of makeup, which kind would it be? Oh, I saw that question. Um, me? Oh, boy. Um, hmm. Gosh, that's a hard question. Um, I don't know. Just in general or daily what I would wear? I don't wear makeup every single day, but um, okay. Um, probably foundation. I have not worn foundation on YouTube yet. And most of my Instagram pictures, I'm not wearing foundation. I actually am starting um, a new thing. In fact, I just bought a couple. Um, <clears throat> I'm very picky about 
how foundation feels on my skin. And I do have them, but I don't wear them very often. And <clears throat> excuse me, goodness. Um, and um, I've been, I decided, well, you know what? I really need to find one that I like. I don't need to wear it on a daily basis or anything like that, but I do like it for my art and stuff like that. So my new thing is the quest to find a holy grail one that I love and actually could wear for a whole day if I needed to. And so I bought a few and I'm going to be reviewing them and using them for the first time on camera. Like I do with a lot of my things I use do, you know, for first use, I'll save it. In fact, I have three palettes right now that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that I've done that with. And I'm doing it with the foundation. So that's the one I could live without, but I would like to find one that I absolutely love. And I also was in a, a oven explosion. I was thrown into the wall, set on fire. That's on one of my um, live vlogs. I think live vlog number two. And I have little scars in my forehead and my neck and my chest, which I see, I mean, I'm really lucky for how badly I was burned in person, people don't even notice it, but I'm very cognizant of it, especially when I put foundation on because it can sink into the little marks. Right. So, um, wow. I, uh, no, I, I didn't know that. And I definitely can't see it through the videos neither now. No, I even did a close up on the camera. Um, if I zoom in, uh, cause on live chat, you can't zoom mm -hmm. with the, um, with the setup I had. When I do the foundation one, I'll use my zoom. And if I zoom in, you can finally see it some. And I don't even think other people would see it even with the foundation. It's just as an artist, my personal pickiness. Yeah. And <laughs> I also, but you know, it's there. It's not, it's not that anybody can see it's that, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, and I don't like the look if it, because textured skin, <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Hold on. Let me take a drink of water. I know you have not just. Um, the way you apply um, foundation to textured skin and the foundations you use are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And um, because you don't want it sinking into any kind of texture or scarring or anything like that. So, um, and that's also why I wanted to share it with people because I know there's a lot of people with acne scars and hyperpigmentation and other things that, um, you know, they want to know something good for that. So, and something that doesn't feel disgusting on your face. I mean, I know they're so much better than they used to be. Yeah. And I, I have three or four right now, but I tried a couple and one of them I thought was fantastic and it was actually waterproof and all this kind of stuff. I mean, not that I'm going to swim with it because I'm also, a sw I, I, that's one thing I can still do is swim. And um, that's kind of like my moving meditation. I zone out swimming laps um, yeah, and I get to go back that. soon. So I'm so excited, <laughs> but uh, that's something that I'm going to be um, sharing. But that one, it was great the first time or two. And then it looked like a mask and it, I don't, I don't like that masky looking thing. Even if it's full coverage, it doesn't need to look um, cakey. So yeah. on, I will search. And when, um, when I find it, you all will know. Because <laughs> I'll be trying to find it. had a question. She says, uh, I found something to fade scars. It's called Cicatricure. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Have you heard of it? Um, let's C see. Cicatricure. <clears throat> oh, Citricure. Yes. Um, there's actually various scar fading um, creams and medications that work pretty well, but I just never tried them. And there's also, um, what, what is it, um, the lasers and stuff that they actually can laser it off and everything. It's just um, deciding, part of me does not want to change it because it's almost like a badge of honor. And then yes. other times I'm like, mm, I don't like that. And then most of the time I forget. I so know people, Some people use uh, e-vitamin oil for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very good for scars, as is uh, rose hips oil. That's very good. And um, vitamin C can help. So you have to be careful, though, because that can be a little bit um, irritating if you're not careful with the vitamin C serums. But yeah, it's really, to be honest, I was dating a physician and um, 
he didn't notice until I told him. So okay, it's well. not, <laughs> when I point it out, then you can see on my neck and there's a V shape because I was wearing a V neck. Luckily I had very heavy pajamas on when it happened. It was dead of winter, December. And so that's what saved me. I was burned under my clothes, but it wasn't as bad because it melted my favorite turquoise fleece shirt. It just melted. It was dead. It was black and gross. And I was like, maybe if I pull it, I could save it. It was so oh pretty. My God. <laughs> I know this weird. I'm worried about the shirt. Um, it was my favorite. And um, yeah, when I pointed out, then you then you can see it. I was in the emergency room once um, because of one of my illnesses, and I said something, and then they looked and went. Oh my God. Yeah, it is there. Oh, wow. I would have noticed. And I get a lot. Oh, how, I love your skin. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's fantastic. Great. Cause I get, what do you use? You don't wear foundation. And especially when I go in the makeup store, they're like, you don't have foundation on. No, and that's also a little bit different for somebody who is, you know, makeup or makeup guru that, you know, that's usually, you know, the designated routine, but I figure I don't have to follow it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, what is your three go to uh, makeup things? Like if you do put something on, what would be the three things you definitely would put? Uh, for me, and this is something I would say for most people, um, before the makeup, moisturize. Um, that will make a huge difference. And um, I know that's not a makeup thing, but that's one thing that is imperative is moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Even if you have oily skin, you can use the gel, um, water-based um, moisturizers, huge difference. It makes things look fantastic and it gives you a good canvas. And then um, as for actual makeup items, um, a nice mascara is good. Mm -hmm. um, a good lipstick. And let's see if I had to use three. I don't know. I do my, I do love eyeliner. I am an eyeliner junkie. I have so many <laughs> eyeliners and so many colors. I used to be too, actually. I, I find myself but as I go, like, as I get older, I use actually less and less uh, makeup, sometimes even not at all for long periods of time. But I used to put it all the time and, and uh, I love eyeliner. I, yeah, like even now, if I do go out, I have to have it. It's just like having, I don't know, it, it's, it's the, just, makes a difference <laughs> it does a little bit of you know accentuation on the eyes and you know actually even the lips i mean maybe a lip gloss or something like that but the eyes and the lips and good skin and you know that's you you're good to go you know <laughs> you don't have to do a full face every time and everything like that but i do love the eye makeup i do i know i saw you said that you loved uh, the t the uh, the green mascara on yes, instagram yes, yeah yeah i find it, it uh, really because when i when i have it i uh, use it both black and then the second coat up which was a green and uh, i just uh, it's not visible right away but it uh, in the daylight it has that nice sort of it gives a nice little green. little flash of color yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like a little pop of color on the eye. Um, like I said, I have a huge collection of eyeliners. Um, Marc Jacobs last year came out with, they have highliner, these gel highliner, um, um, the mechanic pencils, and they came out with a matte line. So oh. they were 12 colors, beautiful, and but you have to work quick. They're only they're, they're only workable for about 15 seconds, and oh then that's God. it. <laughs> but then once they're on, they're set. And... But they are the most beautiful colors. That, um, I think I have almost all of the 12 of the matte section. They have a satin one that they had for a long time that's got 20, 30 colors. But the mattes, because of the matte color, what I was doing is I, I don't normally wear makeup to the gym. But um, I was last year when they came out, they were so pretty that I was putting on like a little bit of eyeliner to go to the gym. Just a little bit of the matte and putting me in a little bit of teeny wing and I'm going, I know this is dumb, I'm going to sweat, but it's just so pretty and it matches my shirt and the blue and a beautiful lavender and a cobalt blue that's stunning. And just a little bit, you know, it was spring and, you know, just that little pop was, you know, so much fun. Do you have a review of it on your channel? No, but um, I can do that. 
I have quite oh, a few. Of them. I want to see the colors. <laughs> yeah, they're really pretty. I think I have most of that 12. And then I have some of the satins. Um, I would love to have every single one. <laughs> yeah. That would be great, but someday. <laughs> I mean, I could, get, it's like candy. You know, you go in, it's toys for me. Yeah, um, I understand. And then I go on the special effects makeup because there's Ben Nye and Maron and um, Krylon and all of those. And then I go and drool over, oh, I want that. And oh, look at those, the Hydra colors and this paint and that, you know, and oh, and the adhesive gel for that. And yeah, it's it's like the toy store for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can make that. I could do this. And oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's it's so fun. It's like a little kid with their box of crayons. Yes, I understand that. Well, when what you do is your passion, then that's what it ends up being. It's like a little addiction, but why not? Because well, I also use the beauty makeup in the special effects. Right. So it's it's um most of my stuff crosses over a lot. I mean, eyeshadows are fantastic. The things you can do with eyeshadows with different um creatures and contouring the face and the shapes and bringing different shapes uh i just think it's so interesting yes definitely, definitely. because I anything understand. and you know as a photographer anything that's light comes forward and anything dark recedes and it's you can change an entire look with just powder you can look like somebody totally else not even paint it's just it's so fun yeah, and, and I found recently people started to do the contouring more and, and you know, using what you're just saying now, but uh, like in photography, especially in editing, obviously that's exactly what we are working with is the shadows and highlights, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. It's interesting because contouring and highlighting has been around for such a long time, but um, the I, I think the average person wasn't really aware of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been used in modeling and whatnot for eons, and but there weren't necessarily dedicated products. I and mean, people used, um, you know, different shades of concealer and foundation, you know, and eyeshadows, and used eyeshadows for the cheek highlights and yes. stuff yeah. like that. And I mean, now they have the kits, and it was so funny. I went in. I think it was Ulta. I don't really go in that store often. It's not one of my favorites, but I went to check it out. And the girl tried to give me, I think, a um, a baking kit and a contour kit. And I went, no, I'm good, thank you. Which I think the baking thing is really funny. Um, for anyone who's not aware, baking is actually a, a old drag queen trick. It's to um, set the makeup so it doesn't crease, especially under the eyes. And if you put it here and you can some people really go to town now that it's it's come out into mainstream and it what you do is once you have a cream product on you set it with setting powder and which is different than finishing powder and sometimes people get a little bit mixed up with them and it can be a little drying if you use finishing powder instead <clears throat> which is one of my things too that i love about makeup i've been learning how to formulate it and make it and stuff like that so that really appeals to my scientific side and um, what you do is you put, let's say, concealer or whatnot, even if you don't use foundation, you put the concealer under your eyes, then you put a layer of setting powder um, lightly and make sure it's smooth and leave it, you can leave it 10 minutes. Some people sit there and bake for 20 minutes and then you dust it off. Oh. And from the heat of your skin, it really sets it in a nice, smooth, um, thing is, um, translucent powder is great. Um, there's a couple brands that are really great for it. And actually, one that's fantastic for it, the old Cody airspun powder. It smells like, um, I hate to say it this way, but old ladies. <laughs> it's got the old lady perfume scent. I mean, um, no offense to anybody. When I'm a certain age, I will call myself an old lady. But um, I think it's a right to be, you know, you earn that right. Plus, you get to say anything you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what my grandmother always says. She says, you get to a certain age, you get to say anything, and you're still a lady. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, that actually works well, but, I, and I use it, but um, the smell sometimes, 
I like the um, smell, the regular chemical smell of it rather than added fragrances. It gets to me a little bit, but yeah, they sell baking kits though too. And I went, but that's just translucent powder. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's one thing I want to tell people to watch out for too. You don't always need a kit for these things and different things you can do without, because they'll jack up the price on things and you know make you think you need to do this when you don't really need to, the, the trick to the contouring with makeup is um, if you want to use a bronzer or a powder is just making sure um, you might not want to bronze and contour with the same color. Although I have one that I can do it with because you want to make sure it's a cool enough tone that it doesn't look orange, but actually makes that nice shadow. And it's in the right spot mm -hmm. because I tell people put two fingers and put it right here. And if you're going to do a cheek contour, it shouldn't go past that because the natural shadow isn't there. You know, yeah. you can feel the cheekbone. Some people will bring it too down, too far down, and then it looks like the five o'clock shadow, and you don't want that. No. And with the nose, um, I've seen people use a fork to get straight lines. Yes, I've seen that too, yeah. And I have a little trick um, for anybody, because most people do not have a perfectly straight nose. I mean, mine, if it comes down, there's a little bump, it turns up a little bit. If you turn your head to the side and just make a straight line from here to here, I'm going to do a video on it. Yeah. Yeah. And don't bring it too far down because you don't want to do all of your nose. You turn your head and just go straight. Ignore the shape of the top. Go just straight here and then turn your head this way and follow the line, not the bridge. Oh, if that makes sense. Yes. yes. And then you blend it. And I like to pull it a little up into the eye because there's a natural shadow there because it yeah. deepens it a bit. And then there you go. Boom. Easy. And then you don't need a fork. I mean, but you can use a fork if you want. Because some <laughs> people have a hard time making a straight line looking dead on into the mirror. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little trick I like to teach people if they want to contour their nose. Oh, thank you. That's a great tip. I will try that out. Definitely. That sure. sounds much easier and better than a fork. Yeah, that when I saw that, that cracked me up. I went, okay, that would work, but I think I'm going to pass. Yeah. And you just turn and follow the, follow the line, not the bridge, and it will make a straight line. That's good. Sounds good. Uh, well, I, I think uh, we're going to start wrapping up. If you have uh, anything to add to, about your channel or what you're doing that I haven't asked you yet. <clears throat> um, well, first off, thank you for having me on. I've had an absolutely fantastic time. I think this is a really good idea. And uh, you, you've got something fun here, this pajama time. And uh, especially on Saturday, I've gotten to a point where I'm not so much on going out Saturday night very often. <laughs> Sometimes, but not too much. Yes. And, um, I like my PJs, I admit it. Um, but yeah, with my channel, um, I'm just having a really fun time. Um, I'm really excited for the interview show. Mm -hmm. And um, I would love to have you on that as well. Thank you. And, um, that would be fantastic, you know, um, really excited for everybody on there. Um, and Hazel, I see Hazel saying Lady Borgia, um, listen to Lady Borgia. Oh, she's the makeup pro. Okay. Um, but yeah, I have, uh, my makeup videos are coming back. Um, I got sick and I didn't, wasn't uploading as much because I started, I was sick and I started doing the lives and I filmed two videos last week. Um, and both of them, the, um, I have to be partially redone because software corrupted part of it. Oh no. And, yeah. And partially the lighting, it was throwing off the, um, the, um, why am I forgetting this? The ISO. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it was like all of a sudden like hyper lighting it and then <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is happening? And I ended up shutting it down, rebooting the software. And then part of it, it's just, you know, the software malfunction. And I don't know why it did that. And one of them, it went real dark. So the speed, um, the speed was being thrown off. And I went, oh, great. Thank you. But that's okay. Those are coming back. Um, okay. I usually 
have them at least two or two to three a week and they haven't been lately but they will be i don't know if it'll be every wednesday anymore we'll see but i will have one day that's a standard day and then the rest of the days will be um kind of random i tended to do that one dedicated day and i do i was doing two to four a week so mm -hmm. those will be coming back we have the interview show coming that will be coming up. Anybody interested, if you go to my about page, there's uh, uh, the email, borgiaglobal at gmail.com. You're welcome to email me and um, I check you out and everything like that and see what you guys talk about and, you know, make sure we're a good fit and everything if we're not familiar with each other. And um, I don't know. I'm excited to do some live makeup tutorials. I'm not sure how that will go with reading the chat, but I think it would be fun to get some people on and let them ask some live questions and, you know, maybe show some things too. That might be fun on a weekend. I think if it would be, be cool if you could teach somebody live, like, like we're talking now, if you can teach something and the person on the other side could try and do what you were doing and see how that. Results. Yeah, that <laughs> might be fun. So I thought of eventually those will be coming in doing some, you know, live tutorials. Yeah. And even maybe some live get ready with me is where I just throw it on live and do a get ready with me, you know, and let people see. So I think that would be a lot of fun. So. And then, of course, I have my weekly Wednesday vlogs, which um, all my live events are I am a creator events. So you can come check them out and um, also meet people from the community in it and, you know, make it part of because like I like to say, it's it's our community and as soon as you join into it it's yours too so you know that's right come on in and join it it's fantastic i think it has made uh, youtube a fantastic experience and i tell people about it i said you know as soon as you come in and start participating and supporting others and doing that hey it's yours too you know yes that's right that's, it's, that's, it's very it belongs to everybody who's supporting it so I think that's probably about it. I mean, sure, I could go on about makeup and special effects probably forever and talk to you about photography for like hours. I could, I could pick your brain about photography forever, but we don't want to kill everybody. So <laughs> I had a wonderful time with you, though. I, I, can, I think you're just fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for, for coming. And, and uh, I would love to have you again and talk more about uh, makeup. There's so many questions I would love to ask. So. Definitely, I have to have you back again. Absolutely, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a fantastic time. <laughs> Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye, -bye. good night. Bye, everybody. Uh, well, that was Lady Borgia. That was uh, amazing. I had so much fun uh, talking about so many different subjects um, and getting up close and personal. Uh, that's what I like the most about these interviews and um, I wouldn't even call interviews, just a chit chat. And today we had our girls all in pajama party. I'm in pajamas, Lady Borgia was in pajamas and we talked about makeup and photography and about chronic illnesses and just personal experiences. And I got to know Lady Borgia so much more than just by watching her videos, which are amazing, by the way. And I just dropped uh, the link to her channel in the chat box. So go and check it out if you haven't yet. Thank you, everybody, for coming in and for uh, those who are still in the chat and just watching as well. I appreciate you all so much. And if you uh, liked what you saw today, it's just me and just girl chat a little bit toned down version, just come back, leave a like, uh, leave a comment under the video and let me know how you liked it. So maybe we can uh, repeat this uh, someday in, in the future as well. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good night and a good weekend. And tune in with us every day from eight to 10. Monday, there's gonna be just me and Andrew. We're gonna get all your questions, Just chat about the last week's events and how are you doing and if you have any questions just have mainly interaction with chat tuesday we have tuesday tech talk and we have amazing guests on uh we are gonna have a, a interesting talk about tech questions but also we're gonna have a guest puppet cut so uh, that's gonna be exciting
So tune in uh, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and I'll see you later. Bye!